In this week's video, I'm going to be working on DAF's amazing system for trailing axle control, EMAS. I'm going to go through some of the basic operations, a component replacement and full calibration. With centering pressure issues and trailing axle sensor faults, I need to identify what the hell is going on. If the centering pressure becomes critically low due to a malfunction in the centering circuit, the rear axle is placed in a centering position and a red warning is displayed on the dash. So we can check the trailing axle data with this test procedure in Davy. I can control the trailing axle independently as shown here. This lets us monitor the various components in the trailing axle system which will help identify the component at fault. So, bit of a basic explanation here. The rear axle angle sensor measures the position of the axle. The steering pressure relates to when the axle is active and the steering pressure number will be a greater number than the centering pressure. The centering pressure centers the axle and holds it in a straight head position. SP11 is a four position valve which controls steering direction. SP41 allows oil to flow between the centering and steering circuits or not at all. SP51 allows pressure to build up in the steering circuit or return it to the tank. SP71 is basically a one-way valve which tops up the accumulator for the centering circuit. SP201 controls the steering pressure in the steering circuit. This is the basic of basic explanations for these components. Going in depth would take hours. So hopefully I should have a full in-depth explanation live on my blog over at my website at trucktechuk.com next week. Right, back to it. With the steering angle sensor reading 51 degrees and the axle being in the straight head position, I need to jack up the back axle before remotely operating the trailing axle. As you can see, here is the location of the steering angle sensor, which is bolted to the stub axle and to the axle tube. With the axle now jacked up, we can test the trailing axle steering via Davy. With the steering control correctly operating, i.e. a rise in steering pressure over centering pressure and a current changing on the various valves, I can identify that the rear steer angle sensor value isn't changing and therefore causing our fault. We can now get more invasive. With the near side rear wheel removed, we can get a better look at the rear steer angle sensor. This is a critical component in the steering system, as it is used as a reference point to check that the rear axle has reached the correct position from the calculation made by the ECU. The front axle angle sensor is the input, and this then adjusts the rear to suit. I love this ratchet. Not only can you use 3.8 on one side, but I can fine tune this angle sensor when I put a quarter drive Allen key socket on the other end. Links in the description if you want one. Not too labour intensive to remove this sensor, two bolts and a nut. I can now remove this short wiring harness from the sensor as it plugs in just inside the chassis. With the kingpin face now cleaned up, I can now fit the new steering angle sensor. This is literally a glorified kingpin cap complete with grease nipple. With the steering angle sensor now fitted, I can grease the kingpin. With the grease coming out of the bearing, we can now cut the cable ties on the wiring harness. With the steering angle sensor adjusted to zero degrees via the Allen key and Davies monitoring confirming a straight ahead position, I can now fit the wheel and go about calibrating the steering system. With all the steered axles jacked up, I can then calibrate the steering control system. Unfortunately, this is a full calibration due to us replacing the trailing axle sensor. The full calibration is not needed for simple 2-2 valves or pressure sensors for the centering and steering circuit. Now, as I've jacked up the vehicle already, I've fulfilled the conditions for calibration and I can crack on. 
Davy is now testing the electrical side of the system, as if this part fails, we need to rectify this before we can go any further. With this complete, we can up the revs and continue with the calibration. It's literally doing what it says here, checking the hydraulic circuit. This is usually when it decides to burst a pipe. Fortunately for us this time, it didn't. I set the steering straight as I drove the vehicle into the workshop and with it set at zero degrees on the front axle angle sensor, we know it's in a straight ahead position. I've even marked the steering wheel for reference. As I turn the steering wheel to the left, the rear axle should do the opposite, which always helps. We can then take the steering fully to the right and back to the left. This is starting to get old now. With Davy happy for a change, we can now get this back to the straight ahead position. This is why it's important to mark the straight ahead position before carrying out the calibration, as I know exactly where zero degrees is. With the steering in the straight ahead position, Davy will now perform a series of turning operations by itself. Davy now checks if there's any air in the hydraulic circuit and then we can switch off the ignition as we've successfully calibrated the steering control system. We can now go for a road test. No point in going on the bypass, as speeds above 45 km an hour sets the trailing axle in the central position, so if you want full steering functionality, the slower you go the better. As always, any questions drop them in the comments, thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next one.